I'm an agriculturalist and I've always been interested in the interface between agriculture and health. Here in Congo, I have the privilege to work with two nutrition programs that incorporate both. One of them is with the Presbyterian Church here in Kinshasa, and the other one is through the ASSP project in the interior of the country that works primarily in the areas where the Presbyterian Church of Congo has many health centers and hospitals. We train community volunteers to help communities address malnutrition through nutrition education, through promotion of gardens, and also through home visits and follow-up with families with malnourished children who need extra help in tackling the problem of malnutrition and increased understanding of how to prevent malnutrition and how to provide good weaning foods for their children. Another intervention we are working on that has potential to reduce malnutrition is clean cook stoves. Nine out of 10 households in Congo depend largely on wood fuel for daily cooking. A significant amount of a family's income in urban areas is spent on purchasing fuel, and in rural areas, women and children spend a lot of time gathering and transporting fuel. The time and money spent obtaining fuel is often cited as the primary reason why food is only prepared once a day. Congo also has one of the highest per capita death rates in the world from indoor pollution caused by open fire cooking. Breathing smoke often leads to respiratory illnesses like pneumonia, which currently is responsible for 19% of deaths in children under five years of age. I'm a part of a five-member team from the CPK Health Department and the ASSP project that is doing research on clean cook stoves. We've been piloting a top-load updraft stove called the PicoPay. The PicoPay stove is a gasifier stove and it essentially burns off the gas in the wood at a high temperature in a low oxygen environment. This stove produces significantly less smoke and uses about half the wood of a three stone fire. Sandrine Macombo, who is a nutritionist with the CPK Health Department, has been very instrumental in carrying out focus group studies with women who have used these stoves. Her work has provided important feedback as we work to develop a prototype that Congolese women will readily adopt. Donc on les utilise parce qu'elles connaissent bien le terrain, elles viennent et travaillent par rapport au programme qui, qui est établi, si c'est la nutrition, si c'est le jardinage, si c'est le foyer. Et on a déjà l'expérience sur le terrain, donc on prend déjà ces mamans-là qui travaillent bénévolement pour les comptes du, de l'église, du centre. Vous avez vu la façon dont on a classé, et comme ça le feu peut durer pendant une heure. Hein. Voilà. Mmh. Voilà, un bon bois sec, le feu comme ça va traîner pendant une heure, et c'est une heure ça peut te servir à cuire les feuilles de manioc, je ne sais pas si vous consommez les feuilles de manioc là-bas, mais laissez cet espace pour que l'air passe, vous voyez que le feu prend en couvre, hein? ça c'est pour couvrir. On attend que les feux prennent un peu. L'air entre et ça sort. Comme ça, les feux ne s'éteignent pas. Ça s'allume, ça s'allume, ça s'allume jusqu'à la fin. Jusqu'à ce que les bois se terminent. Le fire dies et vous end up with a biochar. The, the wood cooks down and essentially it's making charcoal for you. And then this, this biochar can be either used in, in a regular uh, stove here, which they call a babula. To cook another meal or you can crush it up and add it to the soil to help improve your soil. Biochar in sandy soils can increase yields by up to 240 percent as the biochar improves water retention, reduces soil acidity, and increases the availability of nutrients. Um, right now it's really burning off those great gases at the top and it's, it's working quite well. This tin that we're using right now is very flimsy and it doesn't look like it would hold up very well and uh, it won't. It, at this high heat it will burn through pretty quick. Um, the stainless steel will hold up much longer. It will be heavier weight and, and it will be shiny. And anything shiny is always prettier, right? <laughs> Our next step is to produce a thousand stoves of the final prototype based on what the women have identified as important and what is within the boundaries of the fundamental principles of the gasifier's design. This will involve importing a higher grade metal and we will need to identify a local factory with the capacity to stamp out models 
that can be flat packed and assembled in the interior by local artisans. Another piece that needs to be developed is the educational messaging on how to operate the stoves. In the next year we hope to do a large trial in both rural and urban areas using 1,000 stoves.